Okay, happy Friday, everybody. We are back with another remote writing workshop. Today, we're going to talk about November's National Novel Writing Month, otherwise known as NaNoWriMo. <laughs> Aaron and I, before we started recording this, we're figuring out how to say it. <laughs> And in celebration, we'll be covering how to develop characters in your novel. So whether you're participating in writing a novel this month or not, these character building tips will certainly come in handy. So first, let's talk about NaNoWriMo. <laughs> what is it? See, now I'll say it. So NaNoWriMo stands for National Novel Writing Month. And they're just trying to torture everyone by shortening it. So it began in 1999 as a daunting but basic challenge. And it was to write 50,000 words of a novel in 30 days. So each year on November 1st, hundreds of thousands of people around the world begin to write. And their goal, of course, is to write these 50,000 words of a brand new novel. And so all these amateur writers come together, whether teachers or gas station attendants, anyone, um, they're not published and everyone just supports each other. And a lot of times brilliant new writing careers are born in this month. But of course, you know, we've, we've started November already and you don't have to wait until November, November 1st to start this challenge. You can pick any month, any 30 day period, any time period. So simply come up with a date, start date, end date and write until you get 50,000 words. And as we've discussed, don't self edit, just write and keep going. Awesome. Sounds like this is the perfect mission for our viewers. And of course, character building is one of the most important aspects of writing a strong novel. So how does a writer begin to draw a compelling lead character? There are so many things that go into it, but first you want to explain the character's reason for existence. They need to have a goal and motivation within the story because the character's goal is why the entire story exists and it's why your character is going on the journey. And so without it, the entire novel won't work. So for example, your main character's goal could be to kidnap someone. And now you need to figure out their motivation, the why. So no matter your character's goal, their motivation must be strong and believable. So sticking with that kidnapping idea, why would your character want to kidnap someone? Well, it could be that he or she wants to keep them safe from someone else who's out to do them harm. Or the motivation could be that your main character needs the kidnapped person's um, unique skills to help them achieve a greater goal. Mm -hmm. So then you want to delve into the motivation behind that greater goal. So keep asking the why questions to dig deeper into your character's motivation. Mm -hmm. You also need to ask what your character is willing to risk in order to reach their goal and what will happen if they can't achieve their goal. So all of these things should be mapped out before you begin writing and it's going to help craft your character and story arc. Awesome. So once you've established your character's goals and motivation, what comes next? Yeah, so once you've laid that groundwork, um, you have to realize that all great novels have something that a character must overcome, which is conflict. And it's important to include both internal and external conflict. So external conflict um, is traditionally broken up into a few distinct categories. You have character versus another character. So Harry Potter versus Voldemort you have character versus technology. Um, a classic example is Mary Shelley's Frankenstein or Arthur C. Clarke's 2001 A Space Odyssey. You also have character versus nature, such as Moby Dick, Captain Ahab. Uh, character versus society, uh, a great example is The Scarlet Letter. So the community turns against Hester Prynne. And then you also have character versus supernatural, and that could be something such as War of the Worlds. Pretty obvious, character versus supernatural. So then we have internal conflict, which is character versus self. And that's when your character is struggling with things such as mental health, moral dilemmas, or basically just their own nature. And this takes place within the character's mind. Um, a really great example is Bridget Jones. Throughout the whole book, she's struggling with her own self-doubt. Um, of course, all these motivations can overlap. You don't have to choose just one. Get really messy. Pick external and also internal conflicts and play around with them. All right, so now that we have the character's goals, motivations, and conflicts established, is it time to start writing? No, wait. There are other things to consider before you even begin. You want to make sure your character has strengths and flaws, and you want to make sure that both are meaningful because you don't want to have a character, for instance, who has these incredible strengths that help her throughout the book, and then you just kind of throw in random flaws that don't impact the story, like she's not stylish or she's bad at math. You want the flaws to be things that are going to impact the story. Um, 
like, does she completely panic in really tough situations? Uh, does she have short-term memory loss that's gonna get her in difficult spots? Is she a prodigy with the ability to affect major change, but she's also addicted to pain pills. Uh, and so she can't function on a daily basis. So you wanna balance the strengths and flaws and make them equal. Um, you also wanna decide whether your character will be dynamic or static. Now, dynamic characters are altered by the conflicts they face, while a static character is not. So a classic example of a static character would be Sherlock Holmes. So no matter what happens, his personality and viewpoint remain the same, and this can often be to their detriment. So this can be a flaw and a strength. Uh, a dynamic character would be uh, one of my favorites, uh, both of them, Elizabeth Bennett and Mr. Darcy. They both overcome their incredible pride and stubbornness and to find love. So then you want to decide how much your dynamic character will change and how they will change. Are they going to change for better, for worse? What inspires their change? And finally, does this change affect the people around them? Lots of things to think about. Another really important thing is backstory. You want to give your character a past. You don't have to include everything, but you want to ask yourself what moments in your character's past made them who they are today. Think about what pivotal moments shaped them. What are their happiest memories, their worst memories? Do they have any suppressed memories? And now this next one might be obvious, but you'd be surprised at how many writers forget to craft their character's physical characteristics and mannerisms, especially if it's your main character. Um, so remember to show the reader what they look like and try to describe them in a unique way as well. A lot of writers kind of fall into the habit of saying, using description like, oh, they were blonde, handsome, and tall. And that's not telling the reader anything. You're still talking about a faceless character when you're using generic terms like that. Uh, so be very unique in your physical descriptions. Also, what do they sound like? Do they have a certain accent, cadence? Uh, does their voice match their appearance? Do they walk with a certain gait? Do they have a distinctive communication style? Do they have any tics? So you want to make these characteristics unique so that they're memorable for the reader. We'll make this character really stand out. And finally, do your research. And this is so, so very important if you're writing a character whose personality or the experiences they're going through are very different than your own. So for instance, someone from a different ethnic background or someone with a mental illness that you've only heard or read about. So you wanna really research for authenticity and don't just wing it because readers are going to see through your lack of research and they're not gonna connect with your character or story. And I think that's it. There's a lot more, but that's it for now. We could spend all day doing this, talking about character, but the important thing is to create your main character before you begin writing and make them distinctive in and of themselves. Definitely, awesome. So what is our assignment for this week, Erin? Well, we Earlier, I had mentioned, you know, if you want really, you know, start this novel, that's up to you. But we're going to start kind of with a smaller assignment, which is build an amazing character. So even if you're not going to dive into National Novel Writing Month or you want to right now, I want you to craft a character for future use or to use now and use all the tools we talked about. So map out your main character by answering questions about goals, motivation, conflict, strengths, flaws, physical traits and backstory and make sure to do your research. Awesome. That was a great topic, Erin. So thank you so much for giving us all of your epic wisdom on character building and creating an awesome character for your novel. So that is it for this week, guys. We will see you next time on our remote writing workshop. As always, let us know how you like these videos. And if you have any suggestions for us, please DM us with any ideas. We would love to hear them. Thanks, y'all.